Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. I decided to swap out the servo. Um, I'm going to pull that old Savox and use it for something else down the road. And I picked up this Protec RC. It's a high voltage uh, servo. It's a real short shorty. And this thing is super fast. And when I say super fast, I mean it is at 7.4 volts. It's 0.04 seconds per 60 degree of travel. Now that's less than half of what a lot of so-called high-speed servos do. This is probably the fastest uh, servo in the standard size I've ever seen. It's all metal, um, it's solid, it, it, I put it on the tester and it's really smooth. Uh, it's 25 tooth so I can use the, uh, the nice aluminum uh, servo arm that I have. Uh, so I'm gonna swap one for the other and uh, I need to check what spacing I'll need on that. But um, as you can see, things are coming together. I've got the, uh, the speed control soldered up. Let me just tuck these wires aside for a moment. I've got uh, my two uh, battery wires here. So the uh, connectors will go at, at this end of the car over here on the right hand side. And uh, these are the battery straps that come across an anchor here. Uh, the receiver is not attached at the moment. I have my uh, my motor fan on over here. I'm going to be running that wire along the side. I'm just going to be using some Velcro. Now they provide uh, some Velcro, but it's very small tabs. Um, I've got some slightly larger pieces of Velcro I'm probably going to go with. Excuse me. And uh, got the wings mounted up. I used uh, aluminum wherever I could as far as screws, anything that's light. Uh, also, these uh, these nuts here are all aluminum, uh, and the standoffs are the titanium ones that come with it. Uh, so um, I also uh, took out the grub screws uh, down here, the steel ones, and replaced those with a pair of uh, titanium grub screws. Um, they're basically these long grub screws. I'd had a little kit on order that comes with a pair of them. And uh, that finally came in, so I went ahead and swapped those out. Uh, everything else is coming together. The got the body painted and stickered up. It's nice and bright, easy to see. Uh, so um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, work on this servo now. I may need to uh, unscrew the plate here, um, but I'll try disconnecting the servo bracket and see if I can uh, lift that out without having to move that. So let's get rocking on that. Oh, these are some little aluminum trays I picked up. They're only a few dollars a piece. They're really thin aluminum. They come with some little stick on rubber feet. I'm sure those are going to come in really handy during builds. Got my wrenches moved around. There we go. There's my two millimeter. Now, if you'll recall, I went through a lot of effort to get the uh, to get the servo distanced properly, the servo arm, and to get that little uh, connecting rod set just right. And I'm probably going to need to go and do that all over again <clears throat> because it 
is a different servo, so it will probably require adjustment. So looks like I'll need the one millimeter spacer only. Now, if you've noticed, I've had a bit of a hard time sometimes getting this servo out of the frame there. And that's because I've been using these washers and I am not gonna need to use these washers anymore because the uh, top of the case on this servo is aluminum, not plastic, so I don't have to worry about the screws uh, getting pressed into the plastic, and so I don't have to worry about them not clearancing being just a little too wide. Sorry if some of this is off camera. I'll try and adjust this a little bit. So I wanted to confirm that and I thought I would check the directions and the ProTech requires zero millimeters of spacer, not the one as it looked. So always check just to be sure. So those can go in a box for later in the event that I decide to change up. probably not likely that I'm going to get away from this servo because unless there's some problem with it, it is really nice. Now, since I'm not using uh, so many uh, spacers, I can go to a shorter screw. probably do just fine. Yeah. this to lay flat I want it as low as possible if you recall there was a little bit of an issue with clearancing on the, uh, the arm against the uh, top bulkhead so what I'm doing here is making sure that the servo is as low as possible in relationship to the bracket and the chassis. This surface here is just too soft to be able to do that. I need a hard surface like this little box.
Excellent. So, as you can see, there's a decent air gap there, which means this is as low as it can be. If I hold this up here, you can see that the servo is nice and flat. So, perfect. Now I need to get the little screw for the servo arm. one right here that's nice instead of a Phillips head they give us a metric piece and I should be able to swap that for titanium and since this is a very short Top here, I can go with a six millimeter. So there's a good four or five millimeters of threads that are going to go in there. So I don't see any reason to use that extra long screw. this down. Not sure what size we're working with here. There we go. So not only are we screwed down but we are clamped. stud I wonder how close these are look I may not need to make much adjustments to that little control rod there and since we're going into metal not plastic like we were on the old one we need to put a little Loctite on here And this arm is a TLR part, if you recall. It's one of the few aluminum pieces that did not come with the kit because they have no idea how many teeth are going to be on your servo. And now I can slide that in and out without any issue going to make doing field repairs a lot easier. should already be enough Loctite on both of these screws and inside the aluminum bracket that I don't need to put any more on there. Now I'm not going to tighten these down completely because I want to check on that control rod length and see if that's going to be something I need to adjust or not. Just gonna tighten these down enough that the screws are centered and seated. So that looks like it is straight up and down. 
and okay, let's get that's in the middle. And the arm is a little bit to the left, so I need to lengthen this up a little bit. I've been thinking about taking a pair of regular pliers, which I use a lot, surprisingly. I hate using pliers because they're kind of a coarse tool, but they're really good for popping on ball sockets and things like that. Taking a pair, a pair of them and dipping the fronts of them into, um, uh, what's that, uh, liquid rubber stuff. Um, anyway, it could be, there's a variety of products that I could use. Um, glues, things like that, to try to make a smooth surface, something that's tacky, it'll give grip, but not so much that, uh, I mean, you don't want it to be soft, but you don't want the metal to be damaging things. Spacers. So I think I'm going to need one millimeter. Let's start with half. No, I'm going to do one. So let's see that so that's about the right angles yeah it's easier to do it the other way Maybe I can push it in against the edge here. There we go. center up the uh, steering rack there. I'm going to flip it over and check it. And it's perfect. Okay, great. So, uh, good thing I went with the one millimeter instead of the half. Trusted my instincts. Now I can anchor this hardware plate down, or electric electronics plate. Okay, good to go. Let's 
So now it's time to get stuff wired up. Let's see. I need some. Some small zip ties. Now, the zip ties can be a little, I don't know, harsh. They can cut into insulation a little bit. I'm going to use some uh, pieces of twisty ties. Just going to cut off the sections that are kind of torn up a bit. Okay, that's going to be enough over there. accidentally anchored my servo wire underneath a little electronics plate. wonder if I have another one of these screws. One's getting a little tattered, it seems. Mm -mm. Nope, I'm going to have to see about getting one of those later. Wow, that's really a pain in the neck, isn't it? The way this is designed to get the antenna into there, you've got to not only have the plate out of the way, you've almost got to have this arm off. Okay, I'm going to try taking the plate off again and see if I can squeeze that sucker in. They give us a marker for the antenna.
usually they put a little dimple where the antenna is going to come up. It doesn't look like it. Should be right about there. If they had given us a marker. So it's going to be right about where the L is. Let's see, antenna. Now I'm not going to use all of this because this is, first off, this antenna is really short. Um, but I'm just trying to see if I've got the hole in the right place. Yeah. Not bad if I do say so myself. Cool. Okay, so let's see now if we can get the antenna through that hole. curve in it. Now I'm going to have to loosen some screws. Isn't that a pain in the neck? And I am running the soft rails, as I probably discussed earlier, way earlier in this build series, probably back near the beginning. I went ahead and took everything off so that I could pull out the arm and take a look at how this works. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of material away there uh, just because if I need to pull this thing out in the field to be able to get at that antenna wire and then I got to feed it back in again I don't want to have to take everything apart if I can. should be able to slide that in and up now. Yeah, there we go. Didn't take much. You know what, before I do all of these screws, I'm gonna put in the first one and the last one. And then I'm going to make sure that I can slide that in once it's attached to the pan. Nope, that is always going to be a problem. So, anytime I want to switch these rails, or I have to remove that electronics plate, I'm going to have to deal with the antenna. That's kind of a pain. I would have hoped they'd have a better system.
Now you just take that little grub screw and put it in the hole next to the antenna. Tighten that down and that anchors the antenna in place. Make sure you leave some slack on your uh, antenna wire so that you can move things around if you need to. And I'm not going to use a ton of tape because once all the wires are on this thing, it's not going to really go anywhere. So. since it's kind of a long fold let's make it a little longer and we'll anchor it at both ends go so do they give us any markings no but negative is when you're looking at the connectors facing up negative is usually this guy right here Steering is our first, so let's get that plugged in. See, if you've got your uh, the little tabs facing up, your the black, your negative is the one that faces towards you. Okay. Should be able to just tuck these guys in here. Perfect. I put on a uh, little capacitor pack here. Didn't want to have any uh, issues with power. Plus, this came with a capacitor, but it was kind of beaten up and a little old. So I thought I'd go ahead and put a, uh, a fresh set. So where is the two-sided tape? There we go. Like I said, don't need much. How that ought to do? More than enough. see if I can tuck the uh, fan wire under the battery bracket a little bit. Gonna have to remove the screw completely to do it. And that pulls aside. There we go. I can just tuck that in. And then kind of close the door over top of it.
Another rule of thumb is the, uh, the exposed tabs here on the connector. Always face those up. And since this is a six channel, I can plug it in anywhere along here. So I'm going to place it a little up closer to the edge here since the wire's a little short. In fact, I'm going to go around the other side of the antenna there. There we go. So that's all nice and clean. There's our two battery connections right here and here. This one's a little on the short side, but I think I just need to... There's a lot of solder up in there. Just bend it a little bit. That'll make up the difference. Perfect. Same thing here. There we go. Nice. Okay. So, the switch, that's going to be a tough one. Could put a spacer under here and cut a notch in the body so I can reach that switch. I think that'll work great, actually. Need a longer screw. I'm guessing one of the wide one millimeter. Okay, this is a 4600. It's a little on the light side. I'll probably be running 56s a lot of the time, maybe 6000s. But if the races are short enough, I'd rather run a smaller, lighter battery. So, just kind of want to get a baseline for how this thing is weighing in. Tuck one of these under here so it can't get around. Don't want it sparking or anything. tires these haven't been glued but it doesn't really matter it's not gonna, it's not gonna add a substantial amount of weight one way or the other this is going to be a very visible car
get the scale out. And I forget what the weight limit is for spec class. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to get that number. Okay, it's what I thought it was. It's 1,500 grams, but I wanted to be sure. Okay. I'm going to have to use the four tire scales. going to be interesting to see how all this effort to get a nice light car has uh, how it's come out. Okay, drum roll. All right, fourteen fifty seven fifty eight. So I am under spec weight by almost by forty one forty two grams. So uh, that's great. I'm gonna have to add weight. Which means I can run a heavier battery right off the bat. I can do that every every single race. Don't have to worry. Um, I can put some weight in the rear or in the middle uh, using uh, either the uh, the brass weights that go right behind the motor or uh, using one of these underneath the uh, the battery. So I'm definitely going to have to add some weight. I mean, right off the bat, I can add the 37 gram weight right here and and still be underweight so uh that's fantastic that's gonna that means i can uh you know tune the car weight wise whether i need the weight in the front and the rear middle etc so uh excellent smoking uh you see all that aluminum and titanium it was a little bit of a hassle but um you know counting grams really paid off fantastic Okay, just for kicks, I'm going to try a few more batteries. First, I want to uh, weigh up these two batteries individually and see what the difference is. And as long as I'm doing that, let's... Uh, Let's pull this battery too and uh, see how these things compare. Now, one of the things I did, and I highly recommend this, especially for this type of car where you are running shorty packs, is get the bullet connectors that are four and five. Um, because, like, I've got these Orions, and this is a very nice pack. Uh, it's a uh, uh, 55s, I think. Yeah, 5500s. And uh, they are four millimeter. So, um, whereas this is a five, and uh, these smart packs are fives. Now, these are good too. Um, but, you know, there's a diff definite weight difference going on here. So, uh, let's see. Now, we know we've got an extra. 40 plus grams to, to shed. So that's 164 grams. So there's my weight difference right there. And again, that was uh, 212. So 
uh, 64, so 48. So I'm over by a couple of grams. That's nice and safe. And and even though this is a bigger battery, capacity-wise, it's lighter, which is surprising. It's almost got a little puff going. These things are supposed to go down on their own. I'm gonna I'm gonna check these. So even if I run this guy, I've still got to add a little weight. So we know where the weight is. I don't need to do the whole check them out thing. Okay. So I can run my largest shorty pack and still be a couple grams under. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel.